Hi, I'm Router Bob. Welcome to Shop Saber Minutes. Today we're going to talk about the Shop Saber CNC controller. When we created the user interface for the ShopSaber CNC controller, our number one goal was to make the operator experience very easy. We did not want to create an engineering position on your shop floor. All right, now here's how we accomplished that. First, we ran the user interface in the Windows environment. Now here's what that did. It basically gave us Windows underneath, so that lets us run programming software right on the machine control if we want to. Plus, it lets us connect to the outside world, so if you want to transfer files in and out. And another great benefit is it allows ShopSaber technical support to actually log on to your machine in case we need to do diagnostics or training. So it really made an easy system. Now let's take a look at that. Everything the operator needs is displayed on a single screen on the machine control. Now let's just start from the beginning. I've turned the machine on. Uh, the screen comes up. The first thing I do is home the machine. I press a button on here that says home. Now here's what home is. Home is a mechanically determined position. So each axis has a sensor on it and the machine moves until it trips that sensor. Those sensor locations are constant, so once that happens, the machine is always at the same place. In fact, the machine control won't actually let you do anything until you perform the homing procedure. The red rectangle that you see on the user interface actually represents the machine table. And this little red dot in the center is the spindle location. Now let's talk about how we jog the machine. When we move around, it's called jogging, and so we can jog in all three axes. Now one way I can jog is hit this arrow key on the screen, both directions here, or I can do in the Y axis. And of course we can jog up and down in Z. Now I can make it move fast, medium, or slow. Sometimes I don't want to jog it very fast. Maybe I'm setting something up. I also have the ability to actually jog it incrementally. So if I set it on a thousandth, every time I hit that, it moves the machine a thousandth of an inch. And you can see that displayed right here. So I hit that, you'll see that change a thousandth of the time. If I want to move a larger increment, ten thousandths, and watch that digital move. So that's how you incrementally move things around. Now when we put a tool in the machine, somehow we have to tell the machine control how far the tool is sticking out of the collet, because they're just clamped into collets. So that's called tool touch off. Now there's a couple ways to do that. The old way was to do a manual touch off, where you jog the machine down to the table and you touch the tool off. But there's an easier way to do that now, and we call that the tool height switch. So basically all I have to do is go to the control, hit the tool height switch, the machine goes back to the switch, and then it goes down in Z until it trips that switch, and that takes a reading. And from that point on, then the machine knows the length of that tool, and it saves it. So for tool one, it saves that value in the register for tool one. Then you switch to tool two, tool three, tool four, etc. touch them all off, and from that point on, the machine knows how long those tools are. You know, even if you have a non-tool changer machine, the process is really the same. You load the tool, you hit the tool height button, and it takes the measurement, and it saves it. That's really all you have to do. Now, we've actually created a program in our software, and we have to figure out what controls where that program goes on the machine table itself. And it's actually called setting zero. So there's two things I'm worried about. Where is the corner of the material? In other words, what corresponds to X0, Y0? Now, I could jog the machine if I wanted to. I could position a piece of material on there and jog the machine over, or I could just type in X12, Y12, and it would go to that position. All right, so let's say that that's where I want the corner of the plywood to be, and maybe there's maybe this corresponds to where my part locator pins are also. And then all I do is I hit X0, Y0, and that becomes the origin of the drawing. So that X0, Y0 corresponds to the X0, Y0 in your drawing. So that's what positions it that way. Then the next thing I have to do is I have to determine where Z0 is. Now here's typically in cabinet, Z0 is probably going to be the top of the spoil board. In some instances, it's the top of the part. So we go back to our actual drawing and make a decision on what, how we set it there, and it, do we do the same thing here. So there's a couple of choices. Here's one, I can do it manually. I can actually jog the machine down where the bit's just touching the top of the spoil board and hit Z0. Or we have an Auto Z feature, which basically allows me to, to put a switch up on top of the surface that I want to be Z0, hit the eight Auto Z button, and it comes down automatically and touches that switch off. It saves a lot of time, but either one of those accomplishes the same thing. So we've done two things here. We defined where the part is in X, Y, and we defined where the surface is in Z. That's all there is to it. 
We've started the machine, we've homed it, we've put the tools in, we've touched them off, we've set our zeros. Now we're ready to actually execute a program. We have a thing called visual validation that really helps us make sure we have the program we want. Let me show you how easy that is. You start out over here and you say file and you load your program, so you open it. All right, if I hit the view button, it actually shows where that those tool paths are going to be executed on the table. So this is great for a couple reasons. One is, I can make sure that that's the program I thought I located. And second is, is it where it's supposed to be on the table? In our case, it is. And of course, if, if you see this red dot here, if I jog the machine around, you see where that moves around. So we call that visual validation. So it's just a system to help you make sure everything's right before you run the program. You notice right here, we have a bunch of buttons that we use all the time, but there's three of them we haven't really looked at. The first one is warm up. What warm up does is it causes the spindle to turn on and it starts at a slow RPM and then gradually increases. It takes a couple minutes. Here's what that does. That gets your bearings in the spindle up to operating temperatures, which means the spaces in between are correct before we load them. It makes your spindle last longer is what it does. So typically I do that first thing in the morning or maybe if the machine's been idle for three or four hours, I might do that, right? Then something else related to the spindle is the spindle button. When I depress that, it turns it on. So the spindle starts running and I can actually vary the RPMs with this slider if I want to. And then when I depress it again, it turns it off. And finally, the last button on here are pins. Now here's what that means. That's part locator pins. We use those to align the material up. So the pins are raised up, we slide the material in there, and then we hit the pins and they retract, and then we run the program. That feature makes loading and unloading much, much easier, and that's why we put, on, put those on most of the machines. Think about this group of buttons as a convenience group. The machine control has a real neat feature that lets me set some positions, for instance. So what would I use that for? Well, let's say that at the end of a program, I want the machine to go back to the back. Maybe I'm cutting cabinet parts. At the end of the program, I want it to go back to the back. Normally, that's in the back towards the center. And I say, that's where I want the machine to park when the program runs. So what I can actually do is say, okay, I'm gonna assign that to P10. So I'll go edit. I'll say, get that position. And I'm gonna go ahead and name it. I'm gonna call it park. All right. So I'll save that, and then let's jog the machine back up here. So what I can do is I can say, okay, just go to P10 park, and it goes there. But I can also call that in a program, so at the end of the program, instead of telling it X and Y coordinates to go to, which really would have to come out of the post, I can just say go to P10, and my operator can set that wherever they want. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. Now, another way I use it is actually for tool change. If you don't have an automatic tool changer, then you want the machine to come up to the front to allow you to do tool changes. So I'll call that tool change, and so we'll just go P1. I've set as tool change, I say go, and it automatically takes it to the right position. Those things just make the machine a lot easier to use. Sometimes when you're running a new material or using a new cutter, you may not know exactly the feed rates or, or spindle RPMs that you want. So you start with something and you start cutting. Now there may be an instance where the material's harder than you thought and you need to slow things down. Well, we can actually adjust the feed rates up or down while the machine's running a program. And there's a couple ways to do it. One is we can use this slider and we slide it up and down and that varies the feed rate Then I can listen to it. Uh, so the insert and delete keys raise and lower, or I can go control in either one of those and it sets it back to the normal. I can actually do the same thing on spindle RPMs with this slider. So as it's cutting, I can move that back and forth. And sometimes, I call that tuning it to the material. Sometimes you raise it or lower it and it'll, it'll sound just right. So you know you've really dialed it in for the optimum use of the material and the plus and minus keys while the program's running do the same thing with the spindle. So you can really, really get the most out of your shop saver CNC with these features. Now, let's actually execute a program. Here's what we do. We go File, Open, we select the program, and then we hit the Viewer, and that validates, you know, that's the program I think I'm running its position on the machine. So all I have to do to execute it is hit the Start button, and it starts executing the program, and on the machine controller screen over here, you can see actually where the machine's moving, and you can see the tool pass. So everything's running great. Down at the bottom, it shows you which line it's on, it shows you how long it's been running the program, and it shows you what percent of the code's been run. And actually, after the program's in it, it actually prints up out here how long it took to run it, which is really nice. Now, let's say everything's going good, but maybe, maybe I need to pause it for some reason. Well, why would I need to do that? 
Uh, maybe there's an operation I wasn't expected. I forgot about So I said, wait, 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 let me pause that. Pause means pause motion. Everything else is running. So, let's, okay, oh, that's right, that's right. It was supposed to drill that hole there. So to continue, I just hit the start button and it keeps going. And I would let the program run. It would execute all the tool changes and hopefully at the end it parks it where I told it to. But you know, sometimes things happen that are unexpected. So for instance, the power goes off and it stops in another program. Or you break a bit. You know, maybe a bit gets dull and something happens in the material and it breaks a bit. So what do you do? Well, it's not that hard. So let's say I just noticed I broke a bit. I hit, I stop it. First off, when I look on the screen, it says aborted by user, that's me, and it says line 104. So what I really need to do is put the bit back in it and get it back to line 104. So here's how you do that. You go up here to restart, and down here, holy cow, it remembered line 104. But let's say maybe it, it didn't break it on that line. Maybe it broke the bit, and then I stopped it. So let's say, well, let's go back to line 90. So I'll just go back and say, started at line 90, and I hit OK and then it continues the program. That is a really, really great feature if you ever have a program stop in the middle or you break a tool. I really became a believer in the ShopSaber CNC control interface when I got my own ShopSaber CNC and started using it. And I realized how well thought out it was and how easy it made the machine to operate. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at ShopSaber.com. Thank you for watching.